This story dates back around 1570 years ago, when multiple barbarian tribes attacked the Roman Empire. The barbarian and Hun tribes wreaked havoc across several Roman cities. The residents desperately tried to escape, but their paths were blocked. On one side was the Adriatic Sea, on the other, the Tyrrhenian Sea. Their only option was to flee to nearby islands in the sea. Upon reaching these islands, they found safety from the attacks. But there was another problem. The soil on these islands was so soft that even a person couldn't stand firmly on it. Despite this, the settlers decided not only to live there, but to create an engineering marvel, establishing buildings, canals, and bridges. Without access to fresh drinking water, the Venetians still managed to build one of the most powerful cities. But how did this become possible? How was such a vast city constructed on small islands, where even standing was once a challenge? Nearly a thousand years ago? Welcome once again to Sinlux's videos. Dear viewers, the people who initially fled to these islands had no permanent shelter. The soil was like soft clay, causing anything placed on it to sink. Some suggested returning to the mainland, but that would have meant certain death. The barbarian and Hun tribes were nomadic warriors from northern Europe, exploiting the Roman Empire's weaknesses to launch attacks. The situation was so dire that the soft islands became their only refuge. The islands were about 5 kilometers from the shore, scattered across over 150 small, marshy islands, each with similarly unstable soil. During this time, a refugee found himself sinking into the ground. In an attempt to save himself, he thrust his boat's oar into the ground. It sank several feet deep and eventually struck solid ground. This moment inspired the foundation of Venice. Logs were brought from forests near present-day Croatia, a few kilometers away, and driven deep into the marshy islands. After sinking about five meters, the logs reached a firm layer of soil, where they stabilized. By driving these logs close together, they formed a stable platform. Once the piles were embedded, the tops were cut and leveled, with wooden planks laid across to evenly distribute the load among the piles. Special limestone blocks were placed on top to elevate the foundation above water level. The weight of the stone above and the five-meter-long wooden piles below created a remarkably sturdy foundation. The wood, submerged in water, expanded and tightened, preventing any air from passing through, preserving the logs in perfect condition, allowing them to support Venice's weight for over a thousand years. With the foundation set, the Venetians began constructing buildings on top. Initially, they built wooden houses, but frequent fires during cooking led them to transition to brick. To keep the buildings light, they limited them to three stories. The walls were made flexible by using a special lime-based mortar, and the interiors were built with wooden planks, reinforced from the outside with iron rods. This unique construction method became popular, and the islands soon filled with homes. Unlike other cities that expand outward, Venice grew inward. Initially, people relied on boats to travel between islands. As the population grew, islands moved closer, and eventually, people could cross them even on horseback. Over time, the need arose to connect the islands, creating Venice's unique structure without traditional roads, but with canals as pathways. For the first 500 years, the islands remained unconnected. However, as the population continued to grow and trade activities expanded, the area known as the Rialto became the business hub of Venice. At this location, they first attempted to build a simple wooden bridge, a pontoon bridge, floating on water allowing passage across. Although this bridge made it easier to reach Rialto, it would sway due to the floating structure, often causing people to fall off. Later, a permanent wooden bridge was built, but in 1310, it was set on fire during a riot. Despite the damage, the bridge survived for another 140 years until, in 1444, it finally collapsed under increased weight. Eventually, Venetians decided to build the first stone bridge in Venice to connect Rialto, to construct it. They employed the same method used for building homes. Over 12,000 wooden piles were driven into the banks of the canal, and a stone arch bridge weighing 10,000 tons was constructed on top. This bridge was so successful that similar stone bridges were built throughout Venice. And to this day, these bridges remain standing, bearing the weight of thousands of people. With these bridges, crossing from one island to another became much easier. Unlike other cities with roads, Venice's canals became its primary pathways, making it unique. Goods could be transported quickly and easily to any corner of the city, avoiding the congestion typically found in other cities, where pedestrians and horse-drawn carts shared the same road. In Venice, pathways for pedestrians and canals for boats were separate, allowing people to get off at any point and reach their homes conveniently. As a result, Venice became one of Europe's most powerful and wealthy cities, primarily due to its strategic location, situated at the end of the Adriatic Sea, which connects to the Mediterranean. 
Venice became a key trade route. The Mediterranean Sea links Africa, Europe, and the Middle East. And at that time, maritime routes were the most economical and efficient for transporting goods. The Adriatic Sea allowed ships from Western Europe to reach Venice, making it a central point for transporting goods across the continent. Ships arriving from the Middle East and Eastern Europe could deliver goods to Western Europe, where countries like Italy, Austria, Hungary, Germany, and France could easily access them. Venetians grew wealthy from the trade activities, and people from neighboring countries began to settle in Venice, causing the city's population to rise. But with a growing population, Venice faced another problem, fresh drinking water. Although surrounded by water, the city had only seawater, which could not be consumed. Without natural springs or rivers, fresh water couldn't accumulate. Drinking water had to be brought from the mainland in large barrels carried by boats. But as the population approached 170,000, water scarcity became critical. To address this, Venetian engineers developed an innovative solution for rainwater harvesting. On unbuilt islands, they dug deep pits and waterproofed their walls with clay. However, the plan wasn't simply to store rainwater in these pits directly. Instead, they created a filtration system by building a well within the pit. Surrounded by layers of sand and stone, tiles were placed over the top, creating a flat surface with small holes through which rainwater could enter and filter through the sand and stone before accumulating in the well, becoming purified in the process. Additionally, pipes were installed on the rooftops of nearby homes to channel rainwater directly into the filtering pits, increasing the surface area for water collection. Soon, Venice had over 600 small and large filtration wells. Each well served about 10 to 12 households, effectively supplying the city with drinkable water and once again showcasing the ingenuity of Venetian engineering. Yet, Venice still faced one significant problem, sewage management. Normally, cities have underground sewage lines to transport waste away from populated areas. But with Venice built on wooden foundations, Traditional sewage lines were impossible. Initially, people threw their waste directly into the canals or pathways, creating an unpleasant environment. In the 16th century, Venetians constructed drains to collect waste from homes and channel it directly into the canals. These drains were set above the canal's normal water level, allowing liquid waste to flow directly into the canal. Solid waste, however, would remain until high tide, when rising water would flush it into the canal, effectively cleaning the drains twice daily. The twice-daily tides brought in fresh seawater, which acted as a natural disinfectant, keeping the canals clean. Remarkably, Venice still uses this unique sewage system, which, despite its age, continues to function well. Incredibly, the engineering that built Venice, its foundations, canals, bridges, and sewage systems has withstood the test of time for over 1,000 years. However, due to natural processes, Venice is gradually sinking, moving one two millimeters down each year. It remains the world's only city without cars or motorbikes, where annual floods, known as Aqua Alta, regularly submerge the walkways. Despite these challenges, Venice attracts over 6 million visitors annually, though its local population has declined to below 50,000. We hope you enjoyed this video by Synlux. Thank you for your support and kind comments. We look forward to seeing you in our next amazing video.